I'm trying to get across the essence of what Africa was before the Europeans touched it. And this is what you have to know. And to understand, even if you understand the series, the Africans, you have to have read a lot of African history to understand the omissions. He throws in a lot of good things to disguise the fact that he's leaving out a lot of good things. And he is not telling African history chronologically. He's skipping here and here and there and giving you little tidbits. And yet he is downgrading it in some places and upgrading it in other places. He is one of the most unique Islamic con artists that has come along in years. But he never fails to throw in a good piece for Islam. He is running a unique game. I am not saying that there are not some good things in there. If you listen well, there's some good things. In the fourth session, he begins by downgrading the numbers of African slaves, taken out of Africa by 12 million. He must be absolutely crazy. Du Bois statistics is from 60 to 100 million. In his examination of the records at the end of the 19th century, and they've been examined since then. And Kora, the Nigerian historian, said it must have been as much as 200 million. And in the movement of Africans from the hinterland to the coast, I saw figures and statistics this summer that proves that seven out of ten died in the movement from the hinterland to the coast. And at one lone fortress alone, Gori, this is the French fortress, 20 million passed through this, that one. You got 36 slave forts, and 20 million passed through Gori. And he said 12 million all together. Then he asked the question about the Arab slave trade. He said there's only two million Africans in the Arabian Peninsula now. So what happened to these Africans? He wouldn't ask that question to a competent historian. A competent historian would know. UNESCO investigation into slave trade in the Indian Ocean proves that 30 million Africans were taken out of East Africa for one given period. But if you haven't done your homework, you wouldn't know. Then he said, now what happened to these Africans? Where are they now? If there's only two million in the Arabian Peninsula now, and he asked, where are they? Someone knows where they are and know where they went. Now he assumes that most people don't know, and he's right, most people don't know. Because most people don't know about the millions of Africans who went into Asia. Africans who became slaves to the Maharajas of India and formed the armies of India because the Iranians who conquered India did not trust local armies. And many of the Africans rose to high positions in India. One became governor of um, Bengal, Malacca. Another one rose so high as a general they named a river after him, Ganges. 
notice how he praises the northern African countries like Algeria. Notice how uniquely he downgrades countries like Ghana and Nigeria. Notice how he, he downgrades in the so-called the Christian nations. Notice how he upgrades the Muslim countries. It's a con game. Very unique. Dude. But there was another series done by Basil Davis, and it's far better than that one. But you're not going to see that one because that was done by an Englishman and a white man. See, sometimes we get into color games and don't know what we're doing to ourselves. Basil Davidson, every time Basil Davidson came to a critical part of history, he put an African historian before the camera to explain, and he did a good job of it. Basil Davidson's series was far more honest and, and more historically true than the one with Alamazaroy. Alamazaroy is descendant of many Arab slave traders, the most vicious of the African slave traders. If you don't know the history, you don't know this, you think you're seeing something that's good. And there are enough good pieces in the series to make a whole lot of people think that they are, they're actually seeing something good. Now, I'm not saying don't see it. See it by all means. There are quite a few good things in it. What's left out is another story. 